Here we get our first taste of the Lanham environment within Business Central in the cloud. You'll see here I have that Lanham environment, and some of the actions are very specific to Lanham's products. So you'll see things like pack line scanning, stock pack, and rate shop, and we're going to go through each of these modules as I step you through the demonstration today. The Role Center does have some similarities. Again, just like you saw in my Role Center of the on-prem version, I have my customers and my vendors. And of course, some of my activity queues, things like bill of ladings, manifests, and miscellaneous packages. If I was to take a look at my settings and see my specific role center, here I am in the eShip role center. I'm going to go ahead and choose different roles, and you're able to see things like the EDI role center for eShip. You'll see that a lot of those roles did come straight through right into the web client. So very much like there's a central here, you're able to switch companies as well as switch working dates. Of course, this is the demo environment, so it's not going to have today's working data on here. And you're going to see me bounce between the two products quite a bit, and it's important to do that so that you can see the similarities and differences between both the standard Rolltail client as well as the web client. So let's go ahead and jump to the Rolltail client. Again, same activity queue that you saw in the cloud version as well as the My Customers and My Vendors. Again, just to reiterate, that's the same. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and create a sales order. I'm just going to go ahead and jump to my sales order section and create a new sales order. From here, I'm going to let the system automatically assign a sales order, and I'm going to go ahead and assign the customer. So I'm going to do the Canon group and go ahead and select them. Before I go ahead and start entering in lines, I want to point to the fact that if I scroll down here, you will see the eShip fast tab with all of the same features that we know and love today. The eShip shipping agent, shipping agent service. If you're used to doing things like the shipping payment types, the same for, sh for shipping payment types that you're used to seeing as well as any third-party shipping accounts if we have any set up for this particular customer. From an EDI standpoint, all the EDI components are here as well, things that we're used to seeing and love to see. These are all driven from the customer master. So if I select on the customer number here in the fact box, it's going to go ahead and open up the customer master for me. And of course, from within the customer master, I should be able to, once again, see the eShip fast tab and the EDI fast tab. So here you'll see that I have selected the eShip Fast tab, and I'm able to see some of the settings that are part of eShip at the customer level. So once again, we're seeing things like the eShip Shipping Agent Code, eShip Agent Service, and some of the other fields that we talked about, things like shipping insurance as well as shipping payment type. So again, these are all being driven from the customer master. There are a number of other things that I can navigate to from the eShip standpoint here at the Customer Master. As you can see here, I have my various components, things like posted receipts, and posted packages, eShip agent options, and so on and so forth. The shipping accounts section here is if I had an account specific to this particular customer. In other words, the customer wants us to use their shipping accounts. This is where I would enter it. I would enter this information at the Customer Master, and of course it would flow down to my sales orders. So we can just do a sample one here. I'll just go ahead and choose, for example, a UPS. The customer has a UPS account number that they want us to use, and I'll go ahead and enter in that account number. So now this account number would be available to me if I was to go ahead and choose that at the sales order level, or I can default it. I can default it here so that it would flow down to the sales order. So let's get back to the sales order and enter in some items. Go ahead and say items, and I'm going to go ahead and choose my C100 item. And I'm just going to go ahead and enter in a quantity of three. So I've gone ahead and I've entered in the quantity for this particular item on my sales order. Some things that I can do right off the bat is rate shop. So I can go ahead and rate shop this particular order simply by clicking on the rate shop button. It's going to go ahead and take a look at all the different areas that I could rate shop and see what the different costs are. If I'm going to go UPS next day air, it's going to be $68. So I'm going to go ground, it's going to be $17. I can also rate quote this directly and put that quote right on the line for my customer. For now, we're going to stick with the 
UPS ground, because I want to show you the package options when we get to actually packing this particular order. And a little bit later, we're going to talk about the Lanham emailing capabilities. You'll see here from an email list standpoint, I can choose to enter in different people to email the various sales-related documents to. So here, I can enter in myself, for example, put my email address in, and specify which emails I want to be sent to me. So I can specify whether I want to see the sales shipment, the sales invoice, or the sales order confirmation. In this example, I just want to see the sales order confirmation. So by clicking OK, now I know it's going to go to me. Now, by doing it here at the order level, it's going to be specific to this order. If I want these values to hold true for every sales order that I create for this particular customer, I would do the same at the customer level. And then from a standpoint of creating new sales orders from that point forward, those emails will automatically go out. I'm going to go ahead and release the sales order so I can get to pipeline scanning. So I'm going to go ahead and release. And now my sales order is in a release state. I know that I have three units of C100 going to the blue location. So I've already set myself up to be part of that location. So I'm going to go ahead and pack order number 1017. I'm going to go ahead and jump to pack line scanning. You'll find pack line scanning looks very much like it does in the previous version. I'm going to go ahead and enter in that order number, 1017. And I see that those three units are ready to be packed. I see exactly where it's going and where it's coming from. I'm going to go ahead and start entering my items in. So my C100, I'm going to hit Enter. Now here you can obviously scan the product as well, get barcodes in a scanner. For this demonstration, I'm choosing a keyboard and mouse. So you'll see here I packed one item out of three. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to close the package. So let's assume that I put one unit in a single box all by itself. So I'll go ahead and close my package and now enter in my next item. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in that C100 again. And now again, you'll see that I have entered in two out of three units, and I'll go ahead and enter in my last unit. So now the second box has quantity two units in it, and you'll see here I've packed three out of three. Now some things that you can do is you can view the details of the package itself. So here I'm going to go ahead and do my view package command. And that's going to go ahead and it's going to open up my package for me. My package details are here. You'll see precisely the description of the package, what the shipping agent services are. The tracking number hasn't been assigned yet, so that's why you see a blank field here, and various other details. From a line standpoint, I see that I have a quantity of two here. Of course, my net weight came through my values, both in cost and price, and of course, who I'm shipping this to. So I'm going to go ahead and expand that fast tag to show that to you. If we specified a third-party shipping account number, we would see it here. In this case, I didn't do that just yet. But if you recall, we did enter in the UPS account here for this customer. So you see it tying through very, very nicely. From here, I can rate shop this as well. So again, if you want this to be done at the packing level, we can certainly rate shop at the packing level as well. So as you can see, a lot of the same commands that you're familiar with and a lot of the same feature and functionality sets that you're familiar and comfortable with from the standpoint of the eShip product in previous versions, we see it all here today. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the package and close the package itself. So again, I'm just going to run that close package command. And now my order is complete. So I have packed all three products. Three out of three have been packed, and I've closed all my packages. Nothing left for me to do at this point until I close my order. So I'm going to go ahead and say close order, and now it's posting the order for me. With that, I'm going to jump to my posted sales shipments. And I'm going to be able to see a particular shipment that went out for the Canon Group. Excellent. I want to show you the very same thing coming out of the web client. So I'm going to take this back to the main role center, jump over to the web client, and go ahead and do the same exact thing. So let's go ahead and Jump to sales orders. Let's 
and I'm going to go ahead and create a new sales order. I'm going to go ahead and tab off so the system can create its own sales order. Notice it gave us the next sales order number, 1018. And I'm going to go ahead and put the Canon group in as well. Let's go ahead and stick to our same item, our C100. And this time we're just going to do a quantity of one. Once again, if I scroll down, our same fast tabs that we know and love that we saw earlier are here in the web client as well. Of course, the EDI tabs are here, as well as the shipping tabs. You will find that all of the same buttons that are in the Rolltail client are here as well. So once again, I can navigate through any of these and be able to see all the different components here and the same ribbon. The only difference here is that they've moved some of the buttons in terms of where the ribbon is, but here's all our eShip options that are in the ribbon that we saw at the sales order level. I want to go ahead and release this sales order and go right back to Packline Scanning and pack this as well. So order number 1018. I'm going to go ahead and just leave this order right here and do a quick search. for pipeline scanning. This looks slightly different than what you're used to seeing in the Rolltail client, but all the information is exactly the same across the boat. You'll see the, the package details up here and the line subform below and what's been packed. So let's go ahead and put our sales order number in here, 1018. And now I see that I'm ready to start packing quantity one of one right down here. So I'm going to go ahead and scan in my first item. We know that's C100. And when I do so, we see down here in the subgrid that item C100 has been scanned in and fully packed at 101. Let's go ahead and view the package once again. And here I have all the package level details that we saw earlier. Same kind of thing where you're able to see all of the details and all the shipping information. I'm going to go ahead and close my package from here and close my order. So this order posted through. I'm going to go ahead now and do a quick search for my posted sales shipment. There it is, posted sales shipment. And let me filter to this value. So we see all the shipments here for the Canon Group, and the one we just posted has this package in it. So you'll see that package right over here. This is that C100 line that we just added and the UPS charge on that shipment. I could drill into the package itself simply by clicking on the package number here on the right. And I see that tracking number associated to that package, and of course, the lines that are associated with it. Again, all in the web client. All the details came over, the shipping cost and the shipping charge, any additional shipping charges, the calculated value of this particular order. As we saw earlier with the ribbon, all the ribbon items are here as well. So I can come here and be able to navigate, track my package, reopen the package, as I normally would do within the same Rolltail client. So here I'm going to go ahead and track the package. Obviously, this is a test example, so there's no real UPS tracking here. This is just a bogus tracking number. But nonetheless, you see it posting all the way through. Now, as you can see here with the web client, I have multiple tabs open. I can very simply use Escape to escape out of each window or just hit the Back button to head back to my main role center. So as you can see, feature functionality set are the same across both. Visually, slightly a little bit different, but at the end of the day, it's the same. Microsoft has done some great work here to allow us to put some actionable items. And as you can see here, there's a lot of useful shortcuts for a shipper. Because again, I'm logged in as an eShip shipper. So I can jump straight to things like bill of ladings, 
manifest, billing reconciliation, and export documentation. All this information is here. So I can go ahead and just jump to bill of lading, for example, and create a brand new bill of lading right from the get-go. I can go ahead and let the system automatically assign a bill of lading. I can give it a description and fill in the bill of lading details directly from here. Once the bill of lading is created from here, you'll have the ability to print the bill of lading or print the detailed lines of the bill of lading. So again, same feature and functionality set is also here. With that said, I'd like to shift gears to the receive side and receive line scanning. What I'd like to do is create a purchase order. Doing this back in the Rolltail client. And I'm going to go ahead and just create a new purchase order. So right from here, I'm going to enter in my item, my favorite, C100. And this time I'll do a quantity of two. I'm going to go ahead and release this purchase order and head over to receive line scanning to receive order number 10603. So this is going to be purchase order 106030. There it is, zero of two received. I'm going to go ahead and keep it simple, and I'm going to receive all this time. And I'm going to go ahead and view the receive. Once again, just like viewing the package on the shipping side, we have all the receive details here. So from here, I'll go ahead and close my receives. And if any labels would have been required to print, they would have printed out at this point. And I'll go ahead and close my order. Full functionality set, again, same ribbon that we're used to seeing all along. Let's go ahead and do the same example using the web client. We're going to go ahead and jump to purchase orders. And create another purchase order. And of course, we're going to go ahead and use the same item and quantity of two. Once again, we're going to go ahead and release this order. And this is order number 106030. One other thing I wanted to show you here is that we can do it certainly. Same purchase order, interchangeable between the web client or the standard client. So if you're in a mixed mode, we could certainly accommodate that as well. So once again, we have the ability to do that from here, 106031, and we'll receive all and close that order again. Then close the receive and then close the order. With that said, I wanted to touch upon the emailing capabilities. So I'm going to head back to my department section. And show you some of the email capabilities that come out of the box with the random email components. What we'll see here is that we have the ability to send customer statements, invoices, purchase order confirmation, purchase receipts, and the shipment package. These are just what come out of the box. Of course, we can add more. A great way to do it is to copy an existing document template and go ahead and change it to suit your needs. If we take a look at some of these, you can define within the email precisely how you want the email to be laid out, as well as any attachments that you want to send. So if you want to send a PDF, of the actual document, in this case the shipment, it will go out as well directly from the system. Same set of options on both sides, meaning on the cloud version as well as here within the Rolltail client. If we look at customers, and we saw this earlier, what we will find is from an emailing standpoint, we can define 
who gets which email. Let's go back to that Navigate. And that email list. And here we can define a number of users as well as which documents they get. So it will be just an invoice email, order confirmation, and so on and so forth. And you'll notice these are all sales-related documents or shipping-related documents. However, the flip side of this is if we go to our vendors, the very same email module will allow us to laser target our vendors and choose which documents go to which contact within our vendors. So once again, I'm going to go to Navigate. There's that email list. And now you'll see here that the list is specific to purchasing. So purchase order, purchase order confirmation, purchase receipts, and so on and so forth. So I could list as many people here as I want with their email addresses and laser target which documents are going to go to them. We have different email rules that we can specify in terms of what documents get sent where. So here, this again, very user specific. Different rules as to who gets what can be defined and then associated to the vendor and or customer for that matter. Both these options are available on both sides, the web client as well as the roll tail client. I want to jump to some of the labeling options. And once again here, you'll find that a number of labels come with the system in order to allow things like UPS labels, FedEx labels, as well as product labels upon receive if required package labels, and you can even make your own labels. So for example, here's a package label. Let's go ahead and take a look at a package label and the details around what information we want on each package. So you'll see things here like the ship to names and address and whatnot. You can target the label usage based on different areas within the system. So whether it's an item-based label, a customer-based label, receive, and bins, and so on and so forth. That can all be done with the different details on the label. That works best is to copy a label. Start with an existing label, make a copy of it, and go ahead and make your changes to tweak that label. These labels are also triggered by rules as well to be able to define what label prints when and where. We can define those labels both on the receiving side as well as on the shipping side. So you'll see here, I'm getting to the same thing multiple different ways, whether it was through the receive or through the shipping side. So as you can see, both products are by and large identical. They're the same. They offer the same feature functionality set. The simple difference is it's a different skin and a different UI.